Welcome to Nerdbrage, I'm Matt, there's Brent. Yo, we're gonna do a tutorial on Clue, but not this one. BAM! Star Wars Clue. Brent sent me a text the other day and said, hey, um, I got a new board game, let's do a review on it. I was like, sure, how many does it play? Uh, what's the deal? And uh, he said, it's Star Wars Clue. I was like, dude, Clue's Clue, it's been done. It's n I'm not interested. And then he sent me the picture. Of that. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. I'm down. <laughs> that's, uh, I think that's probably why you gravitated toward it, too. Absolutely, yeah. I saw the picture online, and I, I was like, oh, what's the price for it? And I said, for the price point, yeah, I'll, I'll play that. 25 bucks. Yeah. The basis of the game is Clue. You're basically making um, sugge or not, yeah, suggestions to find out uh, three different elements. First, you're asking, what planet is Darth Vader going to destroy? The next thing is, what room are the Death Star plans hidden in? Finally, which Star Wars vehicle are you going to escape in? Once you have each of those down, uh, then you win the game. So the heroes are over here. Uh, it plays up to six players, and you move around the board uh, making suggestions. If you go into a room, you have to guess that room, just like your traditional clue game. People from your left all the way to your right, the first person that has one of those suggested cards uh, has to show you, and then it stops. That's just that's just regular clue. Mm -hmm. so if you get stuck in the hallway, you don't get to move into a room, you're going to have to draw one of these black cards. First, you have the You've Been Caught by Stormtrooper card. So it sends you directly to the detention block. Once you're there, that ends your turn. You don't get to do anything else for that turn. The next one is Stormtrooper Head card. That means you have to roll again, and if you can't end your turn in a room, you get sent to the trash compactor and end your turn. Then you have the all clear card. If you get one of these, you get to move to any room on that level that uh, you're on. Finally, you have the comlink card. You can either choose to use it on that turn or you can wait till later and decide to ask a player of your choice three questions being a planet, a vehicle, and a uh, room. So next on the components, what we have is tokens that you will use in the room that you're in. And these tokens are used to represent the questions that you're gonna be asking of the other players at the table, is this the location, the vehicle, and uh, the planet that is used in the final answer for the game. For Star Wars School, you have to wind up in the docking bay to leave in the ship that you're escaping in to make your suggestion. The final component we have is obviously the board itself, which is really what drew us into this game. And we have this put on a Lazy Susan because we thought that was the easiest way to play this game. You have rooms like the detention block, the war room, the laser control room, the trash compactor, the throne room, tractor beam control, overbridge, and the red control room, and then the docking bay. Also on the board, you can see all the different miniatures, which are actually pretty good miniatures. I, I was actually kind of surprised at the amount of detail on them. All right, we'll go through the pros and cons. What did you not like about the game? I didn't like that the rules are really not specific, like the detention block. It isn't specific about if you get stuck here, what happens now? Do you still get to ask questions and look for clues? You're technically in a room still. Also, if multiple people are stuck in the detention block, it doesn't say if the first person who comes here to rescue them is going to rescue them all, has to rescue one. It doesn't say if you have to go in there and declare, I'm only here to rescue a person, I'm not here to ask questions. You're cool, you're cool, fuck you, you're cool. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I see what they were trying to do there, and I kind of enjoy it for the fact that it's trying to make it tense while you're walking through the Death Star. You're trying to sneak around the Death Star, and oh my goodness, there's a stormtrooper coming. I don't want to go to the detention yeah. block. We, you do not want to get caught out in the hallway. Absolutely it's, not. It's kind of scary. It's tough. Because yeah. if all your people wind up in the detention block in, on a turn, then the game is over. Yeah, and the rules aren't specific about whether you can not you can ask a question or not right. while you're in there. It's There was a lot wanting in this rule book for yeah. me, and I, I felt like it didn't cover enough stuff. And the rules weren't specific about having being able to move out, move back in, um, move to other rooms. We had to end up doing a lot of house rules when we yeah. played through this. I love the game board, but if you're not playing in a well-lit area, below the top level, it gets a little dark. And we had to use the Lazy Susan because if you play with more than four people, hell, even four people, if they're sitting over here, they can't see this side of the board. The other gripe that I had was the confidential file thing. I mean, it's not an envelope. It's nothing. So the cards just kind of fall out. That's, um, I thought that was really pathetic. Yeah. They could have done something else with that. Let's go into the pros. The one thing I absolutely love about the game is the board itself. The, the multi-layer, it's, it's just, I love it. And then the second thing is the heroes. And it's different because in traditional Clue, 
if you're trying to get to a room and then someone on their turn uh, suggests that you are the murderer, they pull you from the board and they put you in that room and now you're stuck in another room. Mm -hmm. With this game, and they change that dynamic a little bit, you don't get pulled into any other room. The added cards do add a little bit more to Clue uh, and a little bit more um, stress. So for me, the pros were definitely, I love the miniatures. I think they're very cool. I love the tenseness of moving through the hallways and uh, will I be caught? Can I can I keep going? I like the theme overall. Uh, obviously, big Star Wars nerd, so I want to play this more often than regular Clue. Not a pro or a con, but where I think they missed the mark were the tokens uh, for the ship and for the planet. Uh -huh. It would be cool to see you know, a little, little planet that you could move around or a mini ship. Would you suggest this game? I would probably give this a four out of five for me. Just because if somebody said, do you want to play this? I would play it. But that's there's also caveats to that. First, I'm going to have to have at least four players. Five is probably the sweet spot. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it when we played five. Yeah. And six is almost too many. I personally would only give it probably a two and a half. It's fun. It's a different twist on Clue. And that's what I appreciate about it. And it's and just the little nuances are different. You're still making those clue, those suggestions, those questions. Um, it's still that that deduction, mm -hmm. um, and you're trying to outwit all the other players. That element I love because you know I love head to head. Yeah, I'm not a cooperative play kind of game boarder sure. um, or board gamer. <laughs> well, do you have anything to add? Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. And remember, if you like us, don't forget to subscribe and share us with your nerdy friends. See ya.